today, two local high schools look to push their team forward in Lakeshore Public Media's annual academic tournament that we call Making the Grade. This is a quarterfinal match. Who will advance to the semis? Will it be Lowell or Valparaiso? We'll find out shortly because you're just moments away from this edition of Making the Grade. From safer communities, to admirable performances. We power Northern Indiana, so you can do what moves you. This is season number eight of Lakeshore Public Media's annual academic tournament that we call Making the Grade. I'm your host, Andy Schultz, and on today's show, eight of the best and brightest students from around Northwest Indiana come together to push their team into the semifinal round of our tournament. What's at stake? Well, of course, the prestigious Making the Grade Championship trophy, as well as scholarship money generously provided by NIPSCO. Who will it be in the semifinals? Will it be Lowell? or Valparaiso. We'll find out shortly, and we'll have a chance to meet our contestants a little bit later in the show, but we're gonna get this quarterfinal match started right now with some points on the board with our first round that we call question and answer. It's pretty simple. I give the questions, you give the answers. Simple enough, you buzz in if you think you know the correct answer. It's five points for a correct response, no penalty for an incorrect response. We'll just give the other team a chance at those five points. All right, everybody, hands on buzzers. First five point clue of this quarterfinal match. Its tip can reach a temperature of several hundred degrees. Name this tool that, when hot, melts a piece of metal in a way that allows two other pieces of metal. Eva from Lowell. A welding rod? Uh, that is incorrect. I'll finish it for Valparaiso. That allows two other pieces of metal to be joined together. Caitlin from Valparaiso. A soldering iron. Sire, yeah, soldering iron, correct. Uh, Valparaiso with the first five points there. Eva, close, you're in the right ballpark. Uh, but five points for Valpo to get this one started. All right. Its range stretches from the F below middle C to the second D above middle C. Name this musical part that in a four-part choir is the lowest part for women. Tim from Valparaiso. Uh, alto. alto is correct. Five more for Valpo, and you're up to ten. When he was killed in 1918, his British enemies gave him a full military funeral. Give the two-word nickname of this World War I fighter pilot whose real name was Manfred Rocco from Lowell. The Red Baron. The Red Baron is correct. Five points for Lowell. Another five-point clue coming your way here. Identify the U.S. state famed for its mammoth cave whose north... Tim from Valparaiso. Kentucky. Kentucky is correct. Directly south of Indiana. Five more for the Vikes. All right, here comes another clue. The World War II novels Under the Blood Red Sun, Day of Infamy, and December 6 are all set just before, during, or after what surprised Japanese attack on the U.S. in Tim from Valparaiso. The attack on Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor is correct. December 7th, 1941. Valpo with another five. It is orbited by both the large and small Magellanic clouds. Identify this barred spiral galaxy within the local group of galaxies, a galaxy that includes Earth. Tim from Valpo. The Milky Way. Milky Way is correct. Five more for Valpo. Identify the type of statistical plot consisting of dozens or hundreds of points through which multiple... Lauren from Lowell. Scatter plot. Scatter plot, yes. Five for the Red Devils. You're back on the board and you trail by 15. Here comes your five point clue. Dentists, number the 12 of these teeth, one through three, 13 through 19. Eva from Lowell. Molars. Molars is correct, 30 through 32. The flat tooth, the back of your mouth. Nice job anticipating there and you're up to 15 now. What word, starting with R, describes the outside of some types of cheese as well as the out... Eva from Lowell. Rind. Rind, yes, as well as the outside of an orange or watermelon. Five more for Lowell, and you're on top of it. Children wanting to learn this instrument should see which of its smaller sizes will work best for them. Lauren from Lowell. Violin. Violin is correct. The string instrument whose lead player in the orchestra is called the concertmaster, right? All right, good. You guys are just fast on it. I don't have to finish anything today. 
In fact, Tim, you should just take over. Everybody's just jumping on it fast. All right. It's more than 400 million users include recruiters who use its access to people and resumes to find new employees. Lauren from Lowell. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is correct. The online company specializing in professional networking. Another five for Lowell, and you lead by five. An adjustable one is called a potentiometer. What electrical component, which while it slows current in a circuit, creates a voltage across itself? Sam from Valpo. Resistor. Resistor, yes, we're tied again. And that's the end of the first round and a lightning fast one at that as we are tied. Six correct responses apiece. Nice job, both teams in that round. Let's take a moment to introduce ourselves and look up and down the roster and meet the class. I'm on the Lowell side and I'm talking to Lauren. Lauren, part of the academic decathlon, academic Super Bowl, and you're a runner. So you're not a runner? No. Oh, I ran. <laughs> You're not a runner. It says right here, you're, no, it says definitely don't ask about running. No, it doesn't say that. Oh, um, you're not a runner. Would you, do you want to be a runner? Not really. No. Which, of those, which of those activities do you feel like is your strongest? Oh, decathlon. Decathlon, for sure. So what, like, what is the object of the academic decathlon? So basically, you learn about 10 subjects that all revolve around one central subject, and then you sit down and take a bunch of tests about them. Nice. And then you also give a speech and an interview. Okay. And you write an essay. Good. Glad you do it. Glad you're here. Good luck the rest of the game. <laughs> Eve is a senior, and uh, you work on an organic farm. Are you a runner too? No. Actually, not. no. No, okay. It says here, don't ask about running. So uh, tell me about the organic farm. It's really awesome. It's called Lane's End down in Lowell, Indiana. Uh, and it is my first job, and I absolutely adore it. I never want to leave it. I do a whole bunch of odd jobs around the farm. I sure. clean stuff, plant stuff, and it's just really awesome. All pesticide free. Exactly. Great job, Eva. Max is a senior, and you are into reading and sleeping, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to point this out. The time of this taping, this is a viral sensation. You did put on your personnel sheet that you, imit you like to imitate the Walmart yodeling kid. <laughs> now, at the time of this taping, this is currently a viral video that a lot of people watch. Tell me about the Walmart yodeling kid. So five years from now, people will know what this means. I don't know, some kid in the middle of Walmart just started yodeling some song, and I don't know, it's all over Twitter right now, and there are some, some EDM remixes. Yeah, sure, sure. And you are remixing some for yourself, too? Yeah, I'm trying to learn how to yodel. It's not going so well. <laughs> That's good. Thanks, Max. Rocco is a junior, and uh, Rocco, you're into film yes. and video games, yes. right? So you like the screens. Which of those two sort of satisfies more? I'd say film. It's something that I've gotten into in the past few years, but it's something that I definitely want to take uh, as a hobby going forward. And I think that I have a lot of my interest in it is something that I can. It's something that I can do and create stuff, and I think that's a really good outlet for my creativity. Thanks, Rocco. Appreciate that. Uh, good luck the rest of the way to the Lowell team. They are coached by Joe Giannotti. On the Valpo side, talking to Tim, who is a junior. And uh, besides be, being the next future, so the future host of Making the Great, right, which we talked about a little bit earlier off the air, um, you're also into board games and eating. Yes. <laughs> okay, so which of those two is a little higher on the list, board games or eating? Well, I like to do them simultaneously. That's good. That's good. But I would say eating's essential, but board it games essential. are more fun right. sometimes. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. And like, uh, are you into the longer games, the Risk and Monopoly, or do you like the short Candyland kind of games? <laughs> no, no. Because I'm a Candyland guy, so oh, I just want to okay. make sure. Okay. I mean, if there's actual candy, then I like Candyland. It would fit eating. right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, That's good. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, Kate, pardon, Caitlin is a uh, senior at Valpo, and you're into art and DIYing, which of course is do-it-yourself. So yep. what is it that you were doing yourself? Well, anything that will stop me from doing my homework, basically. <laughs> if I can procrastinate from doing homework, I'll yeah. pick up a paintbrush and paint something or turn an old can into a pencil case or sure. whatever I'm feeling that day. Good, Good. saving money that way too, yeah. right? Recycling, reusing, yeah. that's awesome. Thanks, Kaylin, appreciate it, glad you're here. Sam's a sophomore, and uh, Sam, you're on the student council, correct? Yes. So now, do you enjoy the politics of it? Do you like the representation? Do you want to go into that, or you're just like, steer clear? I like uh, the representation part. Is it helps students have a voice, which I think is really important. Good, good. And do you want to go into politics and any uh, representation? I don't think so. <laughs> Get me away from that, right? Yeah. I don't yeah. want to be on the, the cable news, for sure. Chanel is a senior and uh, a part of the NHS, right? National yeah. Honor Society. Uh, numerous academic teams, and you're a swimmer, too. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you swim on the team? Yeah. All right. And how, how, have, how have you done? Personal best? What's your best event? Um, well, best event, like free or fly, but okay. did distance this year for the team. So. All seems difficult. 
Right. If there's like a like a flailing drowning dog paddle team, I could do that too. I'd be on that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> both of us could. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> no, uh, Chanel, great. Glad you're here. Good to meet all of you. Good luck the rest of the way. Valpo is coached by Chantel Melkai. All right, more points coming your way in our next round that we call Pop Quiz. Still five points a piece here, but we're gonna go down the line. This is a one-on-one -on -one competition. Chanel and Rocco, Max and Sam, Caitlin and Eva, Lauren and Tim. After four questions, we cycle back and do it again. You've all played the game, you know how, how it works. Here we go. Chanel and Rocco, this one is for you. It's Skywalk allows you to walk some 70 feet away from its south rim. Name this landmark, created over millions of years by the Colorado... Rocco from Lowell. The Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, created over millions of years by the Colorado River. Yes, five points for Lowell. Max and Sam, this one is for you. The words tycoon, honcho, and futon all came to English from what language that also gave us the words karate, origami? Sam from Valpo. Japanese. Japanese is correct. Five points for Valparaiso. Back and forth we go. Caitlin and Eva for you. When operating, its elevator lets people see the Potomac River and the White House. What tall marble? Oh, Caitlin from Valparaiso. The Washington Monument. Washington Monument, yes. Five more for Valpo. Tim and Lauren, this one is for you. The Busby, the Pork Pie, the Hamburg, and the Cloche, and the Fedora are styles of what? The fat Lauren from Lowell. Hats. Those are all hats, that's correct. Five for Lowell. Also includes cowboy and sombrero, which I'll be putting on after I leave here today. Rocco, Chanel, this one is for you. What, <clears throat> one tourist attraction there. My bad. That's all right, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that was an accident, <laughs> that's no problem. One tourist attraction there is the town of Fatima, where three children are said to have seen the Virgin Mary in 1917. Name this country on the Iberian Peninsula, whose capital, Rocco from Lowell. Spain. It is not Spain. I'll finish it for Chanel, whose capital is Lisbon. It's all right. We were looking for Portugal. Portugal. And that is the end of our second round of play. And look at that. We're tied again in this quarterfinal matchup between Valparaiso and Lowell. Lots of points coming your way here in our next couple of rounds. We'll get it started with our third round that we call Class Project. This potentially is group work, if you'd like it to be. I will give three clues that all point toward one answer. Everybody can buzz it in again in this round. If you give, it, uh, give me the correct answer after the first clue, it's worth 30 points. Correct answer after two clues is worth 20. And if I read all three clues, it's worth 10. Each team can guess at each of the three levels. Clear on that. All right, here we go. Three clues, one answer, social studies, 30-pointer. She started, an, she started at an all-boys school to study engineering, but instead became one of Italy's first female physicians. All right, here's your 20-point clue. She opened her first children's house in Rome in 1907. Sam from Valparaiso. Mother Teresa. It is not Mother Teresa. Lowell? Anyone want to guess at the 20 level? I don't want to try it. No worries. Here's your 10 point clue. This educator's namesake schools worldwide deliberately put children of different ages together in a classroom. Eva from Lowell. Montessori. Montessori is correct. 10 points for Lowell. Maria Montessori, specifically. Nice job there, and you take the lead. Here's three clues, all headed toward one answer. Two of its recently discovered moons were named Kerberos, the head of the three-headed dog of mythology. Tim from Valparaiso. Pluto. Pluto is correct. 30 points for Valpo, grabbing big points early in that one. Nice job, you lead by 20. And I give you three more clues to end this round. 30 points. This book about the homeless in London called The People of the Abyss was never, sorry, it's his book about the homeless in London, we're looking for a person here, called The People of the Abyss was never as famous as his fiction that included the Scarlet Plague. <laughs> 20 point clue, nobody in there, all right. This California author and avowed socialist died in 1916 after writing the adventure novels The Sea Wolf and White Fang. Sam from Valparaiso. Jack London. Jack London, yes. 20 more points for Valpo, and that does it for our third round, where Valpo took over there, and they lead by 40. But 
tons of points coming your way here. You've all played the game. You know how this works in our last round that we call Final Exam. Take a look at the board. You will see six categories. Each contains five questions worth 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 points, respectively. We'll have to take the questions in that order. The team that controls the board is the one who last answered correctly, except for the first turn. That will go to Lowell because you trail currently by 40. It's your board. Which 10-point clue would you like to start with? We're going to go with economics. Economics, a 10-point clue in that category. Author Harriet Beecher Stowe used her money from Uncle Tom's cabin to buy an orange grove in this state to allow her son Frederick to ship citrus fruit all over the country. Lauren from Lowell. Florida. Florida, 10 points for Lowell, you Makes control. Sense. Stay there for 15 or go somewhere else. We'll stay. We'll stay there, 15, economics. This business giant's namesake index of 500 stocks is a leading economic indicator. Eva from Lowell. Dow. It is not Dow, Valpo? Sam? NASDAQ. Not NASDAQ, looking for S&P or Standard and Poor 500. Lowell, your board. We'll stick with economics. 20 points, economics. This old time economic policy recommended that a country's exports exceed its imports. Sam from Valparaiso. Mercantilism. That is correct, 20 points for Valpo. You control the board and you lead by 50. Geography for Geography, a 10-point clue there, U.S. geography specifically. The Gila River flows across Arizona and the state to its east. Tim from Valpo. New Mexico. New Mexico is correct. 10 points for Valpo, you're bored. 15, U.S. geography. This Midwest state's highest point is Mount Sunflower. Rocco from Lowell. Illinois. It is not Illinois. Valpo, Tim. Iowa. Iowa is not correct. Looking for Kansas, the Sunflower State, in fact. All right, you're bored, Valpo. We'll stay there. We'll stay there. 20 points in the U.S. geography clue uh, category. Pardon. This state forms the eastern border of Connecticut. Tim from Valparaiso. Rhode Island. Rhode Island is correct. 20 points for you. You're bored. We'll stay there. Staying there, 25, U.S. Geography. This large island in the middle of Lake Michigan belongs to the state of Michigan. Lauren from Lowell. I don't know why I buzzed. That's all right. <laughs> Valpo? Sam? Mackinac? It is not. Looking for Isle Royale. Geography for 30 or elsewhere. Valpo? Stay. Stay there. U.S. Geography, this will wipe out the category, 30 points. The Bitterroot Mountains run along the border between these two western states. Rocco from Lowell. California and Nevada. It is not those two. Valpo? Go ahead, Tim. That's correct. Idaho and Montana, 30 points for Valpo. Was that a guess? Yeah. Nice guess. <laughs> you clear the category, 30 more, and it's your board. Food. Food. I love it. Right in your wheelhouse. 10 points. In the US, most ethanol for fuel is made from this food. Eva from Lowell. Corn? Yes, made from corn, this food source. Nice job, you're back on the board and you control it. We'll go back to economics. Economics, 25. The Nobel Prize winning economist who wrote Capitalism and Freedom said, quote, if you put the federal government in charge of the Sahara Desert, in five years, there'd be a shortage of sand. Eva from Lowell. Keynes? Incorrect. Valpo? Milton Friedman. I like the quote, though. That's good. Lowell. I will stay with Econ. 30 in that category. Wipes out the category. Economist David Ricardo is credited with developing this two-word idea that usually describes the ability of one person to make something at less cost than someone else. Looking for the term. Lauren from Lowell. Opportunity costs. Incorrect. Chanel? Cost efficiency. Incorrect. Looking for comparative advantage. Lowell, that does it for the category. What would you like to do? Uh, go back to food. Food, 15. A waitress may use this two-word French phrase to say, enjoy your food. Max from Lowell. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. 15 for Lowell. Yes, you're bored. That was fun to say, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll stay with food. Food, 20. This common breakfast food has a fancy form called steel cut. Caitlin from Valparaiso. Oatmeal. It is oatmeal, yes. 20 more for Valpo. You extend your lead and you control the board. 
Stick with food. 25 in food. You can get one strain of this disease with symptoms similar to food poisoning by eating undercooked eggs. Lauren from Lowell. Salmonella. Salmonella, yes, 25 for the Red Devils. You're back on. Stick and with food. You got it, 30 for food. This flap of tissue closes when you swallow so that food doesn't go into your breathing passages. Rocco from Lowell. Uvula. Incorrect. Falpo. Chanel. Trachea. It is not trachea. <laughs> Looking for epiglottis. Epiglottis. I believe Lowell controls the board, right? We'll go with music. Oh, you gave me oatmeal before, right? Yeah. I think that was the last. No, it was salmonella. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Thinking backwards. Thank you, Lowell. Sorry about that. Music. Music. Didn't want to use your time there. Ten points. This instrument featured in the march Stars and Stripes Forever is called... Tim from Valparaiso. Piccolo. It is called a piccolo, also called an ottavino, one octave higher than a flute. Valpo, 10 points in music, your board. Do sure, American writers. American writers, 10 points there. His recently discovered, What Pet Should I Get? sparked a book review in rhyme from the New York Times. Rocco from Lowell. Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss, yes, 10 points, Theodore Geisel. We'll go back to music. Music, 15. The CD called Liberté, Agalité, Sororité features music by female composers Lily Boulanger and Germaine Taliaffer, who were both born in this European country. Lauren from Lowell. France. France is correct. 15 for Lowell. What would you like to do? Stick with music. Music, 20. Tell how many beats are most commonly in a measure with a dotted quarter note, an eighth note, and another quarter note. Tim from Valparaiso. Um, seven. Not seven. Lauren? Six. It is not six. Looking for three, most commonly. And three, four time would have been three. Lowell, music. Stick with music. 25. Give the term for the stick you play a xylophone or marimba with. Max from Lowell. Mallet. Mallet. 25 points for Lowell. That's correct. You're trailing by 40. Stick with music. Music, 30. Give the term for an extra line above or below the staff. Tim from Valparaiso. Ledger line. Ledger line is correct for extra high or extra low notes. 30 points for Valpo. You control the board. Physics for 10. Three minutes to go in the game. Physics for 10. This unit named for a famous scientist is defined as one kil... Lauren from Lowell. Newton. Newton is correct. One Newton, one kilogram meter per second squared. Yes, 10 in your board. Uh, physics. Physics, 15. A frictional force is usually the product of the frictional coefficient, and this force, max from Lowell. The normal force. Normal force, yes, that acts as a right angle to the surface. 15 for Lowell. Stick with physics. Physics, 20. In this setup of elements in an electric circuit, each element is a separate branch of the circuit, a setup often used with the series configuration. Eva from Lowell. Copper? It is not copper. Falpo. Sam, you were in time. Zinc. It is not. Looking actually for parallel, setup of elements, each element, as in not that kind of element. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, Lowell, you're bored. Physics. Physics, 25. Pencils and paper ready here. Calculate the mass of an object in kilograms that, if moved with a force of 900 newtons, develops an acceleration of 45 meters per second squared. Lauren from Lowell. 20. 20 kilograms is correct. 25 for Lowell, you trail by 20. Stick with physics. Physics, 30, a tight game. This leptin, previously thought massless, has been found to actually have a mass. Lauren from Lowell. Electron? It is not electron. Valparaiso. Tim. Positron? It is not positron. We were looking for neutrino. One place to go, Lowell, and we're going to American writers, 15 in that category. This writer is famed for avoiding the use of capital letters in his poetry. Sam from Valparaiso. E.E. E. Cummings. E.E. E. Cummings is correct. Edward Eslin Cummings. 15 for Valpo, you control. You don't, because I'm going to take it. 20 in American writers. This philosopher's 1837 Cambridge, Massachusetts speech before members of Phi Beta Kappa is now called the American Scholar. Scholar. 
Ralph Waldo Emerson. 25 point clue there. This black author's plays seven guitars and two trains running are both set in Pittsburgh. August Wilson, last clue, 30 points. This Native American writer's novels include The Lone Ranger and Tonto Fist Fight in Heaven and The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. Sam from Sherman Valparaiso. Alexi. Go ahead. Sherman Alexi. Sherman Alexi is correct. 30 points, and that seals up the game. A close one in this quarterfinal, and a game played well by both teams. Valparaiso will move on to the semifinals. 275 to 210. Great job, all eight of you. Great contributions across the board. But that'll do it. We will see you next time on Making the Grade. From safer communities. to admirable performances. We power Northern Indiana, so you can do what moves you.